Hey guys, what's up? My name's Alex. I previously worked as a quantitative trader on Wall Street, and in this video, we are going to talk about how do sports books make odds? Why are the odds for the Jackson for the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Bengals game? Why are these the odds, right? And if you think about it, it's the exact same logic as why is the price of Apple stock, whatever it is currently. It's just supply and demand. If a bunch of sharp bettors come in and they start placing bets, let's say on the Jaguars, let's say people want to fade the Bengals, the Bengals aren't that good, people will come in and they'll start saying Jacksonville, Jaguars, plus 275, that's too good to be true. People will start betting these plus 275 odds, right? They'll bet them on US books like BetMGM. They'll bet them on offshore sports books that are sharper and allow higher betting limits, such as Bet Online, Pinnacle. Pinnacle is the sharpest sports book in the world, highest betting limits. Um, so people will come in, they'll start to bet it, right? And then people will start to place their bet their bets on Jaguars plus 275. Um, and then that line will come down. Then maybe Pinnacle says, well, a bunch of people are betting the Jaguars plus 275. I guess they shouldn't be plus 275. They'll bring the odds down to maybe plus 260. And it'll be Jaguars plus 260, Bengals minus 313. And you'll just keep seeing the odds move lower and lower as more people place bets on the Jaguars. The whole goal of sportsbooks is to balance bets placed on both sides, right? What Pinnacle Sportsbook, the sharpest bookmaker, wants to do is they want to balance the number of bets placed on the Bengals' money line and the number of bets placed on the Jaguars' money line. If that starts to get out of balance and more people are betting on the Jaguars, they move the odds lower on the Jaguars. They give you worse odds on the Jags, right? That's what all of sports betting is. That's how all sportsbooks manage their risk. Sportsbooks do not want... $10 million of imbalances placed on the Jaguars, right? They will bring their odds down and give you a much better price on the Bengals. Sportsbooks want to keep the wagers on both sides, roughly offsetting, so they can just make the juice, the vig, or the spread, right? The whole goal of Pinnacle is if we go to a vig calculator, so we can go to a vig calculator plus 275 minus 323, and you'll see the vig of this market is 3.03%. So for every $100, you know, bet on this, if it's equal and opposite, Pinnacle is making $3 a profit risk-free for equal and offsetting bets between the Bengals and the Jaguars. That's what's known as the vig, the vigorous, the juice, the house edge in sports betting. So let's go back here. How do sports books make odds? So let's go back to the Jaguars game. Why do they set odds the way they are? is all Pinnacle is doing is they're trying to balance wagers placed on the Bengals with the Jaguars and make that risk-free 3%. So that the sports book goes into the game and is like, cool, we have, you know, a million dollars bet on the Jags. We have $3 million bet on the Bengals. We made a risk-free 3% on that. We're pretty happy. The sports books are not in the business of taking huge positions, right? They just want to balance risk. So if a bunch of people come in, Betting the Jaguars, the odds get worse on the Jaguars and better on the Bengals. On the other hand, if a bunch of people start betting the Bengals, the odds will get better on the Jags. They may move up to plus 300, whatever, and will get worse on the Bengals. Pretty simple concept. It's just supply and demand. People want to buy GameStop, st GameStop, st GameStop stock. The price of GameStop goes up. People come in and start to sell it. The price goes down. Supply and demand. It's the exact same thing in sports betting. But what is so fascinating and what's so crazy about sports betting is each bookmaker is essentially operating independently. You have bet online, right? They're managing bet online book. They're managing their own sports book. They don't really know what's happening at Pinnacle. They don't know what's happening on BetUS, BetRivers, where people are, are placing bets. They have no idea. They set their odds to balance the price and balance wagers placed on both sides. So if you go to the arbitrage page, Arbitrage, again, is risk-free profit between sportsbooks. So here we can see over 78 points is plus 100 on Barstool, under 78 plus 103 on Pinnacle. So this over 78 would be profitable. Pinnacle is the sharpest bookmaker in the world and has this minus 125 odds. So it feels pretty good to get plus 100 odds on over 78 points on Alabama, Mississippi. Like you could literally place a bet using an Arbing calculator and make risk-free money. 
depending on your bankroll. But the point is, is it's an inefficiency. And the only reason this is possible is because sportsbooks set their lines independently. They want to be unique. We've said this in other videos, but you know, if all sportsbooks had the same odds, we wouldn't need the hundreds that we have in the sports betting ecosystem. It just wouldn't happen. Um, so like if we click on this game, you know, or let's pick a better example. Let's go back here. Let's look for a money line. So we can see money line plus 145 lions, minus 144 bears. Pinnacle has minus 148 on the bear. So maybe that plus 145 is a little good. But long story short, you look at this, it's like, okay, why does this exist? Well, clearly, Barstool is giving you a better price on the Lions. You know, we can click on this specific NFL matchup, Chicago Bears versus Lions, is, um, you know, you're getting plus 145 on Barstool for the Lions. On FanDuel, it's only giving you plus 124, right? But they're giving you better odds on the Bears. So who knows? Maybe FanDuel took more action on the Lions. Maybe some huge sports better who only uses, you know, FanDuel came in and placed a massive bet on the Lions on FanDuel. Who knows, right? So each sports book is operating roughly independently, which is why you can see, again, the importance of having multiple sports book accounts. If you are curious what sports books you should get in your state, email us. We're happy to send you the links with the best deposit bonuses. Do all of that for you. Like you can see, Bears minus 175 on Bet Rivers. Why would you ever, ever bet on the Bears on Bet Rivers when you can bet them on FanDuel minus 144? It makes no sense. You're betting $175 to win $100, or you're betting $144 to win $100, right? So, this kind of explains the importance of line shopping, and this is how sportsbooks make odds, right? FanDuel is going to take a lot more action on the Bears now than Bet Rivers is because they're giving you a much better price on the Bears. And there are a lot of sports bettors who may be like, okay, well, I think the Bears should be at least minus 160. So they're happy to place their bet on FanDuel, but they're not going to place that bet on Bet Rivers, right? And then FanDuel may move back up, right? They may be like, okay, well, now we're going to be plus 130 Lions, minus 150 Bears. And the same thing for um, Bet Rivers. You know, this price is clearly pretty good. Pinnacle, the sharpest sports book in the world, only giving you plus 133 on the Lions. You can get plus 145 on Bet Rivers. There may be a lot of bettors who come in and are like, hey, you know, that plus 145 seems pretty good. I'm going to bet it. So Bet Rivers will ultimately bring its odds down in line with the rest of the sports betting market. So everything in sports betting is based on supply and demand. Sports books largely operate independently. They manage their own risk. They manage their own book. And um, you can see like most things are in line, but occasionally things will get out of sort. And who knows, right? Who knows why FanDuel is giving you worse odds on the Lions? Maybe they just took more action on the Lions than Bet Rivers did. And Bet Rivers took a lot of action on the Bears. We're not sure. But you can see like that is why odds are different inherently in it's because sportsbooks want to be unique. They want to have their own odds. And all the sportsbook is trying to do is balance bets placed on both sides, balance their own risk, and just make that big, right? Just make the juice and make the spread. So again, sportsbooks, how do they set odds? Supply and demand, supply and demand, supply and demand. It's not just for money line markets. It's for everything, right? Um you know, team total points, same thing. If a bunch of people come in, they start hammering bears over 22 points. This is going to get worse on FanDuel. It's just how it works. It's how sports betting works. As bettors place bets, the supply and demand imbalance changes and sportsbooks change odds to bring it back into sync. So they can just get equal and opposites best bets placed on both sides, um, which is the exact same thing as the stock market, right? Why is the price of Apple $200? Because people are buying and selling it at that price and there's no imbalance. If a bunch more people wanted to buy Apple, the price will go up. So that's an introduction to how odds work in sports betting. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, if you have questions about the best sports books to get in your state, we're happy to send you the best deposit bonuses, whether you're betting offshore on US sports books, on Canadian sports books. Um, you know, we're happy to give our two cents there. So thanks so much for your time. And until the next one, bye.